Greetings everyone and welcome to another video in this YouTube channel. So today we, uh, we are going to upgrade to Beam Backup for Microsoft 365 to the latest release, version 8. So uh, as you can see, I'm running uh, version 7.1.0. We'll take a look later on what does this mean. Let's go to the uh, to the page where we can see is the version 8 has been released very recently. Uh, console build will be the 8.0.2. Then there's some release notes, some very important uh, statements here. So that's, uh, I think we are going to spend quite some time um, in order to, uh, to to see everything around. So yeah, hardware, as you can see, nothing has changed much in terms of hardware or perhaps even operating system versions. I, I have not seen anything new. Um, Maybe the .NET, it has been uh, upgraded to 8.x. Uh, 8 but the, well, anyways, just take a look here. Um, the software, this is this is important, right? Uh, especially if you are using Linux uh, uh, proxy servers, you just need to install this uh, .NET package from the Microsoft uh, package. Just make uh, make sure you, you do that. I have not have any uh, Linux proxy just yet. Some deprecations, which is always important to to take to take a look. Um, nothing major, once, once again, but please just go here and take a look into the the deprecations, just in case that something might affect you or uh, your company. So, what else? Uh, there is a great uh, section called upgrading Vimpaka for Microsoft 365. You can only update from uh, these specific builds, and that is why I'm highlighting it here. Um, as well, before upgrade, well, you see uh, a few few things here. We need to make sure that we have enough uh, disk space, especially we have multiple proxies with multiple repositories all over the place because all of that is going to be consolidated into the new PostgreSQL, right? All the metadata um, that it was there scattered all around is going to be merged. Yeah, uh, some comments here regarding the space, regarding time as well. So make sh make sure you take a look because depending of your uh, backup repositories, depending of how much data you are uh, backing up, is is going to take more or less time um, the upgrade. So plan accordingly, please. It's going to be uh, uh, yeah some some long uh, upgrade depending of your size. Um, so the what's new, lots of new great stuff, right? Uh, proxy pools, Linux proxies, things like uh, PostgreSQL database, the NAT server, which is very, very uh, great feature for enterprises, service providers as well. Uh, just the queue, the new queue system, things like in general, uh, again, Linux backup proxies, some S3 zone, distribute tracing, uh, some RBAC to the backup console and Vim Explorers have been introduced, so that's nice. Maybe we can take a look later on. multi for authentication has been as well uh, released with this um, uh, with this new version. OAuth 2.0 for the Explorers. Uh, some improvements on the REST APIs as well. Some data processing and operational improvements, so you can see this uh, release is a good combination uh, between uh, between new features and uh, scalability. So perhaps even with more focus into the scalability, which is fantastic for a product like this. Um, okay, let's go and download now the uh, the, the, the Beam Backup for Microsoft 365 version 8. I just went to my downloads page, same as uh, same as you, and then. I'll click download over here. It's a few, it's a red note here regarding upgrade from an older version. So upgrading from version previous to seven, right? Six point something. Uh, although in the release notes, it says that it's really not supported, but uh, yeah, maybe a repository that it moved from, you know, from six to seven and then seven, the upgrade. That's perhaps what he's saying here. But anyways, if you have any, any questions, please. Uh, strongly recommend to contact support before upgrading. The usual uh, best practices that we will we will discuss now, anyways, right? Yes, just to do some snapshots, so some backup of the server. Just make sure that you can roll back um, in the case in case that something goes 
in case that something goes wrong. So now we will go back to the console. Um, one thing that I like to do, same as in being backup and replication, is I just like to disable the jobs just so they will not trigger in the same second that I close the console and I start in, I start in to try to upgrade the process. You know, it, it, it's a few minutes, but uh, or even a minute. But imagine the job will just trigger, right? It will, will need to wait until it finishes or cancel it. I always like to disable before I close the console so I have full peace of mind of what's going to happen. Uh, okay, let's click update over here. Uh, it's telling me that the uh, Windows Server 2012 is not it's not supported any longer for, on, on this version. So um, I think I have 2022 really or 2019. I, I do not even remember right now. Uh, let's take a quick look on the system. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sure it's not 2012. There you go. Okay, it's it's, to, it's uh, 2022 so we're fine we're fine here let's click ok let's click i accept um let's connect to the you know uh, let's search the license and then let's start with the process i'm going to accelerate this process it took a few minutes to do the configuration check but we should not wait here until this happens. Okay, yeah, it's telling us once again to bear in mind the space, uh, the disk space. So it's going to be installed PostgreSQL on, uh, on on the C disk. Well, I mean, you can change that, but by default, it's going to be in C. I have enough because my I have just one tenant with a few accounts. But please, please, please look at the release notes, make your uh, calculations. Take a look at this uh, change as well, the permissions check because uh, there has been some changes regarding teams and other other stuff. Here is where, uh, as I said, you can just always customize the settings. The NAS password is very important. Please copy it and paste it somewhere else right now. Uh, so nothing to do here. I'm not going to change the PostgreSQL to another drive or anything. But of course, you can always do this if uh, if you feel that uh, you would prefer it installed in another in another drive, and I accelerated the upgrade process. It took again an, another five minutes on my end, um, more or less. Uh, let's click finish here, and uh, let's open the console to take a look of what's um, what's happening on on there. Now that we have the console open, it's telling us that uh, backing up Teams channel message now requir requires uh, paid API. Just uh, take a look into the information that it was there. Let's unenable these jobs. I don't want Teams for now uh, because actually I'm not even using Teams on this specific account. Um, so if it's going to cost me money for something that I'm not... Oh, the jobs have failed. And it's telling us that the repository needs to be upgraded, of course. So this is very, you know, foolproof, right? You cannot do things that you shouldn't. So let's go into my, uh, okay, proxies are okay. But or the repository itself, this is the one that I'm using. Let's click upgrade. This is going to take more or less time depending on your size, once again, uh, based on the release notes. And I have, uh, okay, now it's indexing, which is again going to take some some time. All of this is on the release notes. Plan accordingly. This is probably the, the third or fourth time I'm, I'm saying this. Uh, I have a, two, a few repositories that I've been playing with before. I'm going to remove them. Um, that's fine. Uh, this SMB, I played as well with that SMB, but now it's time to remove it. Um, perhaps I had some backups there, but that, that this that's fine. It's, yeah, they're all. And now, on this indexing process, uh, I'll let it there. Um, jobs cannot run for my information. They cannot run while this is indexing. So it's good thing that we uh, disable the jobs at the beginning. Now I know that I enable them, but anyways, if you try to do something, they're going to fail. The new proxy pools are here. Um, remember, you can you ha can have Linux proxies as well. Let's take a look into the users and roles. What's new over here? I can see the multi-factor authentication checkbox at the at the bottom. That's nice. Uh, let's see. I the role being backup administrator. Where can I see all the roles? Perhaps if I click add. Um, oh well. Anyways, 
those there you will have the the, the groups restore operator roles have no has not changed it's the same as it was before um general settings let's take a look or uh, general options uh history the rest api there is a new history nothing has changed but rest api there is a new checkbox here enable restore operator authentication only so only restore operators will be able to connect to the to the api um so that that's interesting for the rest api nothing else has changed as far as i can see over here so let's click cancel um uh, something new, you can see the CPU and memory consumption across your proxies. So that's nice when you will have 10, 20, 60, 80 proxies. That's nice to see the consumption um, over there across them. So you can always even uh, order by the, the one that is consuming the most. Now we can do as well uh, backups to immutable repositories as primary jobs as well. So the primary repository can be um, can be object uh, can be object storage with immutability. And as you can see over here, now you cannot migrate from a repository that didn't have enable uh, that didn't have enable to enable it. So you will need to create a new repository and then point your uh, perhaps even new backup jobs on, into there. Or there are some migrations as well. Uh, just take a look into the forums. But when the indexing, I mean, with the, when the upgrade plus the indexing of the repository, it's finished, we can go back to our jobs and try to uh, trigger them again. It's looking much, much better. Something that I notice. And that might be that might be just just, just me here, uh, but something that I notice in my environment is that the performance of the job, I don't know if it's because the NAT server, or what, or maybe because of course it's the NAT plus PostgreSQL, but how information appears here on the on the job and how fast, uh, how quick the uh, everything is processed, it's much much faster than it was before. Um, yeah, some, some services here, you see the PostgreSQL, uh, all the Veeam um, services, probably you can even uh, search by the NATS. I truly think that the NATS plus the PostgreSQL is going to make uh, a fantastic uh, improvement on your environments as well. The NATS server is there. So yeah, please take a look on, on your end and uh, maybe share some feedback regarding, regarding performance. But I, I even saw the boost of performance on my small, uh, on my small lab. And I spend on this lab a lot of time uh, on a daily basis. Uh, so yeah, it was, it was good to see how fresh um, everything is. So, um, yeah, well, that's everything for this video. There's uh, some other improvements that we, uh, or features that we are going to discuss on future videos, um, especially Linux proxies, right? I'm sure you are interested into that and Linux uh, and, 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 and proxy pools as well. So let's take a look into those in, uh, in future videos. But for now, thank you so much for watching the video and yeah, uh, looking forward to see you in the future. Thanks. Bye.